Hey guys, here's a little update of the right wing Zephyr 2 clone I'm doing. Um, I've outfitted this uh, with the KF airfoil. It's a KFM2, uh, so it has the step on top. And uh, this is the one inch foam that you saw in the previous video. Um, so I'll just kind of give you an update about how I went about it. So from the first video, you just saw that I had the, the blue wing cut out. Um, so I ended up making the step. Um, so I believe the the uh, root cord here was 14 inches. So I made the step 50% of that. So this is seven inches here. And then uh, out at the uh, the tip, I believe this was eight inches. So therefore this is uh, four inches. So it's just 50% on each. And uh, so I cut that out, and then I used Gorilla Glue and epoxy the the uh, top of the step to the the main wing down here and then I put a bunch of weight on it um, because Gorilla Glue tends to expand pretty um, quite a bit so you need some good weight to hold it down so it doesn't actually push that foam up too much uh, so then once that was cured I had two separate wings so I had um, two separate yeah two separate halves I need to join them together um, so on the bottom here, you can see the carbon um, spars that I put in, and uh, I made uh, kind of like an upside down A. Um, so, and then I tried to um, look at a picture online about the spar placement that the the actual Zephyr two uses, and uh, it looks like it's um, about one third. Um, distance from the leading edge so one-third from here so it was, it was about I want to say 5.33 inches from nose to where this starts and uh, I just have it running all the way out to the edge and then I put a, uh, a middle beam here middle rod um, just for some more support and kinda help start connecting the two pieces and uh, a neat way, some of you probably already know this, but a neat way to uh, recess these carbon rods without going through with an X-Acto knife is uh, to take an old soldering iron that you might have and just literally burn, burn out the path for uh, the rod. And uh, it worked really well and went nice and quick. So, um, so yeah, so once I had the rods in there, I uh, hot glued those, those all in, and then uh, I... Initially, I hot glued the seam together, and that uh, proved to not be strong enough, so I used some epoxy to join the two halves. And then, uh, so once those two halves were done, I, uh, I wanted to sand the, um, the trailing edge out a little bit, so you can see how, if this was a flat plate here, it would just extend out here. Um, and so I did that because I wanted a, a smoother transition out to my elevons. So I sanded the bottoms a lot more. Um, typically, um, airfoils uh, for flying wings have something called reflex. So it's actually, it kind of curves up in the on the trailing edge. Um, so I kind of tried to simulate that a little bit. I mean, you can only do so much with sandpaper, I guess. So, but anyway, so it turned out fine. And then uh, I made these elevons, um, again, trying to mimic the the overall look of the Zephyr's elevons. Um, so I really just kind of handed it, or did it by eye, and um, cut them out, and uh, put it on with um, some tape hinges, um, just this strapping tape and. Um, you just deflect deflect the hinge down, apply the tape, deflect it the other way, apply tape on the other side. It's that easy. And, uh, okay, after that I uh, went crazy with the tape. Um, I went seams all the way down the, the middle of the two. I did a bunch of X patterns or cross patterns. Went all the way along here. It wraps around to the other side. Um, just pretty much 
mirrored every thing I did on one side to the other side. Um, so lots of tape. And then, yeah, you can kind of see the bottom. It's all taped up really nicely. So hopefully that should do the trick. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Then lastly, this motor mount got epoxied in. Um, I marked out, well, first of all, this, this motor mount's kind of like an H. I use the notches or the thickness of the foam to make notches here. And then uh, it's epoxied on the back here where it actually connects. So there's epoxy in there to hold this on. It's super snug fit. And since this is a pusher anyway, so all this is just getting pushed in even more. So there's no way this is going to come off. And uh, nice and snug. So, um, yeah. And then all these holes were just pre-marked from my current motor that I'm going to be using. And uh, uh, so it's looking pretty good. And then as for this rounded front edge here, it's easier to see it on this side. So you can kind of see how I rounded it off there. Um, I actually had this hot wire that I used um, to initially just make a, a straight bevel all the way down um, both sides. So a bevel here and then also on the other wing over there. Um, so I just, it was just a straight cut and then I just took a bunch of, just took a sand, some sandpaper and literally just um, smoothed that out and rounded it over so it was a uh, it wasn't just a blunt, um, blunt edge for the from the flat plate, um, so it actually came out pretty decent. So it's good enough, anyways. Um, the gear that I'm going to be using uh, to actually fly this thing, I'm going to set up two 2200 uh, Turnigy. Let's see. There you go. Two 2200 Turnigy's. Um, I'm going to do that in parallel. And over here, so here's my parallel harness that I just whipped up. Um, yep, so both reds go to the red input and both blacks go to the back input. And then these are just like normal. So that's easy to make. Um, this is my um, NTM motor I got from Hobby King. It's a 1400 kV. Let's see if I can get a. Yeah. So 1400 kV. And uh, I, get, I bought the, um, the uh, motor accessory mount package or whatever. It was like a buck fifty. So pretty cheap. And uh, it comes with this little X mounting bracket and then this uh, prop adapter that bolts onto the motor here. Um, so. I use this X configuration to actually make that make that uh, X pattern out there so on the plane so yep 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 and the servos I'm using were just some free servos my buddy snagged for me uh, see if we can read these yep there we go so Hobbyco um, they're specifically aileron servo because they're like low profile they're actually pretty they're pretty th small as far as the height goes so and then, so these are CS 59s so I don't really know anything about these except that they work um, <laughs> so I don't know any torque ratings or anything like that um, they were free and they were bigger than my HS 55s and I thought I would need them since I'm moving some pretty big elevons here um, the Receiver I'm going to test out here is a uh, just orange receiver from Hobby King. Um, I also got the $11 sat satellite um, extension that plugs into that white port on the side there that you see. So I haven't range tested these at all yet, and but I mean I've seen people fly with them. A buddy of mine has some, and at least for a line of sight, you I. You don't even really need the the satellite, but since I'm probably going to be doing substantial amounts of FPV with this wing, um, I won't always be able to see it. Um, so yeah, there's the the quick and dirty update. I still need to make the uh, wing tips. I haven't done that yet. I'm probably going to do it out of this uh, uh, half inch um, 
foam here just to make some that simulate the same shape the uh, the Zephyr has and just put them on the edges there um, so yeah that's that uh, thanks for watching and uh, I should be um, doing the maiden of this um, within the next week so alright thanks guys see ya